Hey everyone, welcome in, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking keyframe animation with AI. We're gonna be using Comfy UI and WAN 2.1 image to video model to do this keyframe animation. And this is a super useful tool. Keyframe animation is something that's used a ton in classic animation styles. So this is a way to help automate that process um, and create that movement between keyframes without having to actually do it. So first things first, prerequisites. If you have not used WAN 2.1 before, check out the link in the description below. There is a link there for how to install WAN 2.1 that I created. It'll walk you through image to video, text to video, wrapper, native, really everything that you need to know about WAN is in that video. Once you get that figured out, then you can head back here and grab this workflow and it should just work for you. Click the workflow to download it, open up Comfy UI and drag the workflow in. Okay, so before we get into the inputs, I'm just gonna describe a little bit about how the workflow works and give you a couple tips for if you need to change something due to VRAM issues or anything like that. So first thing, Torch compile. Not everyone is able to make this work. You need it Triton working. Um, and I know it's a challenge on Windows. So if you don't have it working, just bypass it. It's, it's not gonna affect anything. It's just gonna make it um, run a bit slower and it's gonna take a little bit more VRAM. Next is block swap. So I did, I changed the nodes purple that I think that are most likely that you're gonna wanna change. The other nodes there, I'll go through some things that, um, you could change, but the most likely ones are, are the purple ones. You, I believe you can go all the way up to 40 blocks for the block swap. Uh, this significantly reduces the amount of VRAM that the generation will need. However, it's gonna take much longer to run if you have to use all 40. So it's really a balance of you know, how few blocks can you swap in order to balance the speed and memory saving capability of block swap. Okay, the other one is Tcash. Um, I would recommend keeping it around 0.1. You do see a quality hit when you use Tcash. So if you're, if you're not liking the quality that you're getting, I would recommend maybe just bypassing Tcash. Um, it's gonna slow down a little bit, but you'll get better quality. Okay, so now the things that you could change if you're still having issues. So First one, quantization. So I have it on FP8 right now. I can even run it disabled, but FP8 makes it run with less VRAM. Um, I'm also gonna use FP16 fast. I, I think that this is only a 50 series card, so 5090. You can just run on an FP16. It's gonna be the same precision. Okay, and then your text encoder. So make sure you're offloading the device. Same thing with your model. Offload device for the load device. And then you can quantize this as well to the FPA version. And I believe that is it for this, for this one. Okay, so now all we need to do is we need to put a prompt in and then we need to put our two keyframes in. So make sure for your keyframes, they can't be something, you know, like outlandish. Um, the, the keyframes need to be at least uh, realistic for the, for the model to uh, go between. If they're something crazy, you're just gonna end up with a uh, like a scene cut in the middle and it's gonna be the first keyframe moving a little bit and then the second keyframe moving a little bit and it's not gonna be what you want. So they need to have a obvious path between them for the motion to work. So it needs to be like the same outfit, similar hair, you know, they need to be similar images for in order for it to generate movement between them well. And then throw in a prompt. So just try to describe how the character would get from keyframe one to keyframe two. All right, so I, I just said a woman with purple energy coming from her hands holds out her hand. And then for your height and width, generally you should keep them at this 832 by 480 ratio. You can, you can swap the height and width, right? So right now I have width 832 height 480 you can also swap it so your height is 832 and your width is 480 but you should keep 
that resolution. Okay, and then that should be it. Oh, one, one more note. If you don't have Sage Attention working, you can use, just use SDPA. If you get Sage Attention errors, just use that. So that is everything you need to know. And we can run it to give it a shot. All right, so you can see we get a pretty cool generation here. Um, to me, this is much better than what we had with Hunyuan. The quality stays better. The end frame and the beginning frame adhere much more to the original keyframes. I really like this workflow. I think if you're looking for a way to do keyframe animation and, and a way to automate your keyframe animation better, this lets you do it with just two keyframes and a prompt. And I have seen some people even get a bit crazier with their prompts as long as the model can kind of like see away between the two keyframes you can you can prompt for some pretty cool motion between them okay so that is it for this video i hope you find value in this if you run into any issues join the discord always happy to help with troubleshooting there join my patreon 100 percent free um, i'll never charge for content or workflows on there. It's really just there to help me host my files and post files a little bit early so that you all get notified when the files come out. Follow my other socials, anywhere you can give me a follow helps me put out more content. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again in the next video.